Um, I talk about it all the time because I have great respect for the game of basketball. You know, um, the whatever, uh, what are they listed? 8,400. Uh, 8,400 people tonight, yourselves. Uh, I guess the internet, I guess, what are they, watching on the computers nowadays or something like that? You watch two really good basketball teams play and go toe to toe. Uh, and uh, I think that's great for college basketball. You know, we uh, thought we had a couple chances there when we, uh, to kind of break the game open and they didn't go away. We had some co costly turnovers uh, in, in that stretch late in the second half. Uh, didn't attack. They changed to a matchup zone and, and we weren't ready for it. Uh, didn't, didn't execute against it. They, not, they played the 2 3, and we were okay, and then they went matchup, and it really messed us up, and that's my fault. Obviously, we weren't prepared for it. We hadn't seen it. Mark had been a scout, watched every game, and hadn't played any matchup to our knowledge. Uh, it was a different zone. So. But uh, if you're going to be a good team, you win different ways. Uh, we won differently tonight. Uh, we won with toughness, resilience. Um, it was just total belief we were going to win the game. Obviously, we left some points on the foul line, clearly. We didn't shoot free throws consistently well, but we made them when they counted. You know, he, ste he stepped up as a, as a really good player should and knocked them down. We get the big stop at the end. Uh, second shot, and we strip it. Uh, so, uh, obviously, I have great respect for Donnie's team. They're really good. I knew it. Uh, and uh, I was just, uh, you know, when you got two teams that hadn't been beaten in our conference, uh, went toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight. So, um, good win for us. And uh, we... Uh, we're excited about the victory. Questions? James said to ask you if you'd gotten treatment for the elbow. That's a non-story. Non, non, non non that referee's handled it really well. That final play, I'm assuming you, Jordan was a good bet. Yeah, they actually went uh, They went to a play we kind of knew, you know, not that we drew it up, but there was a double high uh, ball screen for Ramsa. He took it wide and pitched it in a handoff to, to Jordan. And Jordan's so good for a left-handed player. He's so strong and good going to his right. He drove it with purpose. We did a good job defending the first shot. You know, I got to obviously go to the film and see where we, you know, we probably overhelped off a of Criddle's man not, and, and missed a little bit of a block out, uh, a little scrum, and, uh, you know, big man brings it down, I think, and, and, and pitch strips, you know. So it's, it's playing to the end. It's playing through the possession. And, uh, you know, I talk about it all the time, and we're obviously uh, – perfect example of needing 40 minutes night in and night out to win games. And, uh, you're gonna, you got to find ways to win games. Were you worried at the end there when UCF came down there and was taking the shot to the basket? Were you worried about that? I worried about everything. You know, so, uh, sure, they had the, you know, they had, they had the ball and, um, coming out of the timeout situation. Uh, we, we felt good about our coverage and our system, but you know they got good players too that make plays. And uh, <coughs> fortunately for us, we got the stop. And our defense was pretty good. I mean, I thought we did a really good job on, on Clanton and, uh, and Jordan tonight. I thought we did a really good job on both of those guys. Um, a couple of three, they hit five. They banked the one at the end of the half. You know, I mean, they had five threes. This, you know, I should say. You know, so uh, uh, plus six in the glass, uh, sixteen offensive rebounds for us, thirteen turnovers is still too many, but. We had some sloppy ones, careless ones. Um, but uh, the other thing, uh, you know, we all be, would be remiss if we don't talk about the fact that our bench gave us unbelievable lift that first half. I think Hughes came, gave us great minutes. Justin Coleman gave us great handers, giving us flashes. Uh, on offense, I close my eyes every time he, ha he catches the ball. Uh, <laughs> but he does go get it. Nigel was Tremaine. Thago hit two big threes in the second half to stretch. So, you know, here's a perfect example. We're in ma major foul trouble in the first half. And then uh, we got great production out of our bench. And that's why you have a lot of good players. You know, we talked about our depth being a factor. And I think it's showing uh, at different times, different nights. And um, it's obviously something that I've got to juggle and manage, which is a challenge. But tonight was a perfect example of needing a lot of guys to step up. Three players got three foul, their third foul on the first minute of the second half. How did that change what you wanted to do at that point? Yeah, you know, obviously we didn't plan that. But it happened really quick. Uh, I rolled the dice with Dre, with DeAndre and left him. You know, he had a little bit of a better matchup with Sykes because he's not a guy that puts a lot of pressure on you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that probably was the biggest reason why I left him in at that point. Uh, we just rotated the big guys, and I uh, thought we were fine. Like I said, I thought we had a couple chances, you know, midway through the second half to kind of break away a little bit, and we didn't. We had some bad turnovers that led to easy breakouts. You know, our field goal percentage defense is a lot higher for me than I really want overall. Uh, the number doesn't, I don't like the number, like 43. It's not a good number. But we're giving up too many easy points off of our turnovers uh, that are really uncontested layups. Uh, when we get our half-court defense set, we're pretty good. I think I digressed, as I usually do, off the question. But um, 
but you know the fouls, you know, you just gotta, you know, that's why you gotta have, you gotta have options, Jack, in terms of the guys that you can rotate in and give a different look. Um, you know, Tannen obviously played, played played the shortest minutes of the season uh, in a while. You know, you know he, he was it's the first time he's been in major foul trouble. I can't remember that in a long time. Well, the play that uh, the Dre gets gets fouled on the next two free throws. What were you kind of trying to draw up there? Well, we put Dago in to stretch the floor. We went small and we went four four guards and, and we left Tannen in there because he's our best offensive rebounder in that situation out of a timeout. We kind of ran into a pick and pop action with Dago to try to get a little confusion, maybe a switch. And I think we got a good, we drove it off that. And it was a you know, good call, obviously. And, uh, and then obviously the kid steps up and makes uh, pressure free throws. And we, we, we made them when they counted. Goff made a big one of two uh, late, and, uh, and DeAndre made the two clutch ones uh, to, to put us ahead. Golf 4 or 5 tonight. Golf 4 or yep. 5 tonight from the yep. big, big improvement. But then his, his allergy went to a couple of the other guys. <laughs> Says. He keeps looking more Free throw allergy, folks. You can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> I, know I, I know I talk fast. <laughs> is golf looking more confident, better for him up there? Yeah. He, you know, Klein gets really upset, you know, because he works with a lot of these guys. You know, I blame him. He's the free throw shooter. I, I have nothing to do with our bad foul shooting. Nothing to do with it. Uh, it's all Klein. You know, you get all those McDonald's All American pictures in his office and all that. And, uh, uh, but Mark, uh, you know, he makes him a lot you know, in practice now. You can't simulate the pressure of a game. He's got a good stroke when he gets it up there clean and lifts his left hand off the ball, some things that just technically that we work on. He works at it. He, uh, um, and when it comes out of his hand clean, he, you know, he's got good rotation on the ball. And he shot the ball with confidence tonight, I thought. I thought Dre looked good a couple. You know, missed something. We, we left too many points. We've got to, we, we can't afford to leave that many points on the line against good teams, home or away or neutral, wherever we're playing as the season unfolds. Fans here tonight, biggest crowd of the year, inspirational for you. Uh, no, no doubt. Our fans were phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, you can hear it. You can feel it in the back there. You know, I don't come out, but I'll obviously right to the beginning of the game. You can feel the buzz, the energy, um, for a lot of different reasons. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, uh, Donnie Jones was a really good coach here, and he's a really good coach at Central Florida. Okay, so the dynamics of all that, yeah, I understand it, and you write about it, and it's natural for fans to feel that way. Uh, and I've said all along, I've got great respect for him and what he's done and what he left here. Uh, and more importantly, you know, I, I feel great about the opportunity that I have to take over here. But the fans were phenomenal. Uh, it was electric. Uh, we made it a compelling game to keep everybody in their seats. Uh, but uh, it was a, good, uh, a great night for Marshall basketball. Great night. Great night for college basketball. You know, they, you know, the shame is that only 8,400 8, people saw this game. You know, this game needs to be on TV. You know, you, you, you know, people don't know how good our league is and how good teams are in our league because we don't get the exposure. Uh, that atmosphere, need, you know, the people needed to see that across the country. Will the green jacket travel to Charleston? No. <laughs> it's as close as I'm coming to winning the Masters. <laughs> Power slice. <laughs> Coach, what does it say about your team winning the last three games by a combined five points? It's never been okay. <laughs> They want to, they want me to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think they love me, but they're, boy, they're just just going to pound away at my. I keep my hair cut short so you can't see my gray hairs. You know, my heart. A lot of things. Like, I don't sleep. I mean, I don't sleep at all anymore. You know, after a win, you don't sleep. After a lot, you know, you haven't lost in a little while. But uh, I just think you know, I'm, I'm really proud. This group has a sense of. Poise, confidence, you know, it just it's not a panic button. I mean, we had it last year a lot. We would splinter. We could panic. We could, you know, there's no, there's not a sense of panic. And we've had it pretty much all year. I mean, we've been in you know, a lot of different environments, home and away, you know. And um, I think that's a testament growing, becoming more mature, and having some leadership from some <coughs> older guys. A couple minutes, seconds ago, was that the first time you've ever been in a lost words? Probably. Probably. <laughs> First time you were with Al. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> yeah, what hurt more, the quarter or the elbow? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? <laughs>